The first uh, presentation will be by Dr. Kristina Chufar. And she will be talking about the constructions of social networks in Slovenian case law. Thank you, of course, to the Ferenc Madel Institute and the Central European Professors Network for having us, for initiating this project and also inviting us for this conference. Um, so, as we all know, social networks are transforming our lives and also posing novel challenges for the interpretation of the human rights and fundamental freedoms. Uh, today, my presentation will address how the discourses on social networks are reconstructed in Slovenian, in the case law of Slovenian courts. Uh, social networks cannot be equated with uh, discourse in traditional forms of expression, uh, which is also reflected in this case law. I have traced these reconstructions of the particularities of expression on social networks in the case law of the Slovenian higher court, so second instant courts, and the Supreme Court, the third instance court. Of course, I looked also at the practice of the constitutional court, but so far there hasn't been a case where social networks would play a decisive or central role in it. So we'll have to wait for that. I only considered cases where expression on social networks did play such a role. Um, I have to say that most cases involving social networks are civil law cases, where plaintiffs are demanding damages and other measures due to alleged violations of their personal rights that uh, took place on social networks. The reviewed cases provide some juridical reconstruction, reconstructions of the nature of social networks, about their average users, the conception of online, pub, of online public, expectations of privacy in the digital age, and the role of social networks in the circulation of information. Uh, I have to, of course, stress that the case law involving social networks at this point in Slovenia is too scarce to be considered as established. No cohesive narrative could really be said to be prevalent in uh, judicial decision making when social networks are involved. But nevertheless, uh, case law underlines some possible approaches to these issues uh, that will surely preoccupy courts around the world in the future. And I think also it highlights some uh, sociological facets connected to expression and speech on social networks. Um, so according to statistics, 87% uh, uh, of Slovenians are using the internet regularly and 82% have at least one social network account, uh, which means that social networks play a very important role in our lives. Uh, as was already stated here today, this is a good thing. It, may, it can be seen as empowerment of individuals and groups who can finally connect each other, who have a much louder voice uh, to express themselves. But of course, on the other hand, social networks are also associated with the rapid spread of myths and disinformation, echo chambers, copyright abuse, hate speech, and other problems which call for regulation. Uh, so this regulation happens in two different forums. Uh, social network companies themselves are to a degree forced to moderate content on their platforms to provide a safer space for their users and to comply with the legal requirements. And most of all, of course, they want to keep uh, users on the platforms for as long as possible, so they want to create an environment where they would be <laughs> uh, willing to do so. And uh, this enables these companies to make more money via targeted advertisement. Um, mm -hmm. So the expression on social network is regulated by state and non-state actors, uh, which makes the uh, whole thing even more interesting. The procedures available to those, both to those whose expression was silenced and to those who were harmed by such expression are therefore fragmented between different authorities. Um, since I reviewed Slovenian case law, it makes sense that I say a few words on the Slovenian legal framework. Uh, so, of course, the freedom of expression, we have also heard this today already, uh, fundamental human right, uh, freedom, uh, it's enshrined, of course, in the Constitution of the Republic of Slovenia in the Article 39, but as any other right or freedom, freedom of expression is limited by the rights of others, most commonly the constitutional rights of the right to personal dignity and safety, the right to privacy and personal rights, and the prohibition of incitement to discrimination, intolerance, violence, or war are... Um, seen as these limitations. Uh, social networks in Slovenian legislation are not considered as media. So the media legislation does not apply. And furthermore, uh, these are private companies that offer certain services. And the users who decide to use such services accept the terms and conditions, and thereby they accept the content moderation these companies um, exercise. So in Slovenian, um, 
theory and practice. This is considered a relationship between a user and a, the provider of the service, and the state does not really uh, interfere with this, but of course in different jurisdictions, different approaches to this exist. Uh, in Slovenian case law, I found nudging where a user whose um, post was deleted would be protesting this in front of Slovenian courts. If they tried, <laughs> obviously it didn't get uh, high enough for me to uh, have access to it. Um, so, but on the other hand, there are many cases where users are demanding removal of user-generated content that uh, they believe is in infringement of their rights, and this is quite common, actually. Um, Slovenian Commerce Market Act uh, transposes the e-commerce directive of the EU, which we also heard a lot about today, and it establishes a notice and take down system, so service providers are exempt uh, from the liability for user-generated content. They are not obliged to monitor this content, but are required to stop and prevent violations by removing or blocking user-generated content when prompted by a court order. Uh, if a service provider fails to act and such an omission results in damage, uh, they may feel, face civil responsibility, uh, liability in accordance with the Slovenian Obligations Code. Uh, users posting illegal content, of course, are also legally liable. Um, such content might uh, establish an administrative criminal or civil offense. So let, let's look at some highlights from the case law and how the uh, Slovenian courts reconstructed this phenomena and uh, its importance. So when the legality of expression on social networks is considered, uh, the courts evaluate uh, the problematized speech in its specific context. So it's important for them to establish the nature of social networks and their average users. As an example that I found particularly endearing, the Higher Court of Koper has declared that uh, the freedom of expression is a, and I quote, a precondition of Facebook, where general, uh, and this was based on the uh, generally known facts about social networks, where subjective statements are the standard form of expression. In this case, the court did not award damages to the plaintiff who was um, offended by a Facebook post, but it is not always the case that the, court, the courts take this approach. Sometimes they don't even, um, reflect upon the nature of the social network in play. Um, very interesting to, to, to illustrate uh, how contentious this issue still is in our legal system are two cases, two civil law cases, that originate in the same historical event. This event being a tweet by an opposition MP in which an editor and a journalist uh, at the public media house were referred to as prostitutes. I'm going to read the anonymized version of the tweet so you get the idea. Uh, so the tweet was, and I quote, some brothel Facebook page offers, offers cheap services of retired prostitutes, AA and BB, one for 30 euro, the other for 35, hashtag pimp, pimp, pimp Milan. Um, there is also a criminal case connected to this, but it's still ongoing, so I think it's better to look at the uh, two civil law cases because the editor and the journalist uh, separately sued the politician. Uh, so in one of the cases that was decided in the year 2020, the Supreme Court of the Republic of Slovenia ruled in the favor of the defendant, and the other case was decided this year, and the Supreme Court awarded damages to the plaintiff. Uh, so this creates quite an interesting situation, and how the courts here conceptualized what the nature of Twitter is played a decisive role in how they decided the case. So in the 2020 ruling, in the favor of the defendant, the court described Twitter as a social network characterized by a specific style and manner of expression, owing to the character limitation of a single post. According to the court, the Twitter engendered a specific subculture whose communication is typified by, and I quote, expressive, very brief, fast, also bitter, sardonic, often vulgar reactions written in the vernacular without in-depth reflection, end quote. Uh, the nature of the social network uh, here described con uh, contributes to what the court um, named the spontaneous atmosphere on the platform, where average users consume tweets quickly and without reflecting upon them. So by placing the message in the context of this specific social network, the court concluded that the defendant was expressing his critique through satiric, sarcastic, and offensive verbal caricature without a commentary on the plaintiff's editorial work. In the court's opinion, the tweet in question could be perceived as extremely offensive, but only when taken literally and outside of its context, its context being Twitter social network. Well, the court also warned against the chilling effect, which in its opinion, it's even more daunting on particular social networks like Twitter. So the court decided to prioritize the political message of the defendant and the search enlightenment principle of the search for the truth 
uh, and did not award damages. The other ruling from this year, uh, the court uh, took a very different approach. Uh, okay, the panel obviously was a little bit different and in neither case unanimous, but this time uh, the court held that, and I quote, the use of Twitter communication channel does not grant a communicative carte blanche to anyone, not even an influential oppositional leader, nor can it be used as an excuse for an effective or even premeditated action, end quote. So the court opined that the defendant's tweet lacked argumentation and did not engage with the journalistic work of the plaintiff to which it was supposedly responding. The average reader in, in this version of the court's reconstruction was unable to decipher that the tweet was meant as political critique of the plaintiff's work, but was rather understood as an independent whole, which is an insult. Um, the court also uh, reflected upon the chilling effect but this time it looked from a different perspective. It didn't look for the chilling effect on the social network, but the chilling effect uh, tweets can have on journalistic reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, so this time they, were they concluded that uh, political opposition cannot really cause chilling effect by posting on Twitter, but that nonetheless it is obvious that such tweets are trying to influence journalistic practices. Uh, the court finally stressed that the key problem with this tweet is not that it is offensive or politically incorrect, but that it lacks factual basis for the value judgment the, the, the defendant was making, and that there is no provocation on the plaintiff's side for such a tweet. Uh, so I should stress here that in the Slovenian legal system, the Supreme Court plays a very important part in the unification of jurisprudence. Of course, a single Supreme Court judgment does not constitute established uh, case law, and even if it did, courts are allowed to diverge from what is established jurisprudence if they provide sufficient reasoning for their uh, diversions. Uh, so this issue for now remains open, um, but also some other ideas from case law might be interesting here, besides the idea that acceptable limitations of expression might depend on the platform on which they are expressed. The concept of what we consider as the public is undergoing a transformation right now. So, the reach of individual posts on social networks play a key part in deciding whether something was public or not. Um, courts do not automatically assume that a public account means universal reach, nor do they uh, believe that a private account uh, is automatically harmless or private. Uh, for example, the higher court of Ljubljana recognized that even Facebook friends who view someone's private profile can be considered as the public. In this case, there was a Facebook album uh, that included photographs taken in the um, plaintiff's home without his permission and published in this album. It was private, but still commented upon by five people, and the court uh, claimed that their comments were objectively offensive. Uh, and establish that even Facebook friends, even the most closest friends, can represent the public in such cases. Also, Facebook groups are an interesting uh, nut to crack if you're a judge. So how to, how to evaluate the reach a Facebook group has? Um, so here the, we have an interesting example from the Higher Court of Ljubljana that established that a closed uh, Facebook group, and I quote, makes the freedom of expression even wider. Um, so, uh, in that, this case, there was a Facebook group intended for members of a specific municipality. Its membership was relatively small, uh, some 60 people, uh, and the court established that the reach of this post was very limited and therefore their freedom of expression wider. Uh, furthermore, social networks and other contemporary technologies, as probably we all noticed, have severe implications for our expectations of privacy. Uh, there was a very interesting case before the uh, higher court of Maribor uh, where a school librarian sued a student who filmed her dancing in front of uh, all of the students during a recess, posted this on Facebook profile and it later ended up on YouTube. Um, so uh, the court here said that even though the use of electronic devices was prohibited in the school where she was working, uh, she should have expected that the students will anyway film the event. The court said, uh, that someone who, were, who is working in school environment uh, for 18 years is surely aware that students use modern technology even if you prohibit the use of this technology and concluded that, that it was uh, predictable and acceptable for the student to film this event and to post it on Facebook and it didn't uh, problematize this fact. Of course, not all the cases that I um, encountered involve are civil law cases. 
um, there are some criminal law cases as well. Uh, in this context, I would just say that the Supreme Court of the Republic of Slovenia stressed that the wide accessibility of social networks and their abuse uh, present unprecedented means for encroaching upon privacy, honor, and reputation of others, and that the consequences in such cases are much graver for the victims than if the same criminal offenses are executed by the means of traditional media because of the reach, because of the, how quickly they spread, because of how hard it is to actually really uh, eliminate them from the internet. Um, so, okay, these are some highlights uh, from my case law review that I wanted to share with you. Now we, I will quickly summarize the findings of this case law analysis. So the overview of relevant case law demonstrates that the courts are very vigilant when it comes to unlawful breaches of personal rights, but that they also take into account that we live in a world where communication and the means of communication uh, have changed and are changing, and that this is lowering uh, our expectations of privacy in public settings. Uh, and the way also how people express themselves. Uh, the courts uh, always very carefully, or almost always very carefully, dissect the circumstances of each individual case when it comes to deciding whether a social network post, for example, may be considered as a violation. Of course, here flexibility uh, is definitely very, very, very important, but nevertheless, the decision-making seems a little bit arbitrary because there really is no cohesive thread. It seems that how an individual judge perceives the nature and role of social networks will play a very important part in the way the courts will respond to alleged violations. Uh, as we have seen with the case of uh, the same identical event leading to two completely different decisions. Um, of course, the transformations of communication and societies provoked by social networks are global phenomena, and Slovenian legal system, like all jurisdictions, is still in the process of negotiating uh, these impacts of life in a digital society. Uh, the, rev the reviewed case law indicates that the courts perceive social network as very important forms of public expression, and that they do seek to avoid the chilling effect and avoid restrictions of freedom of expression, and that they also stress this, this in their decisions. Um, as I said at the beginning, the case law involving social networks is not really established, and a reliable set of criteria guiding decision-making is not yet in place. But I'm sure that uh, the courts will be dealing with more such cases in the future, and that in this process, um, their strategies of dealing with this sort of occurrences will also be further developed and consolidated. So probably we will have less of a, um, chaos in this uh, field. So this is all from me. Thank you very much for your attention.